Whoa. <gasps> What's going on YouTube family? Good morning, good morning. It's your girl Pink Pond Princess coming to you with another video. Had to stop by Publix this morning to get a couple things for the house because I want to do a cook, well, a clean and cook video. And I want to show you guys how I like to prepare my crappy and deep fry my crappy. I already have them on ice. I'm going to clean them as soon as I get home and show you how I like to do it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, as you see, I have two crappy that I am going to prepare today. I'm going to actually uh, do some crappy fillets. So to start off, I'll move him to the side and I'll turn my fish to whichever position I feel comfortable with. I like to turn them kind of upside down so I can start at the gills. And then you just make your first cut going down to the head. And I like to turn the fish. And then you'll gently just glide the tip of the knife down the backbone. Take your time, because trust me, I've cut myself plenty of times going too fast. Especially those big days where you have a, a lot of fish, 30 plus. Don't nobody want to cut all those fish up. So yeah, please take your time. If you're tired after fishing, just cut them up, just fillet them the next day. Yep. So the next step is once you fillet, once you glide your knife down, you want to push your knife through, cut it all the way down to the end of the tail, and that'll open it up for you. You'll peel your meat back, gently just take the tip of that knife and glide the meat away from the backbone. And that will allow you to actually have a boneless fillet. And then I'll turn him. And then you'll glide the knife up towards the belly. And then turn him back around and continue the process. And then once I get to that part, just cut it away. Move it to the side. Then to peel the meat away from the skin, you'll just make that, take one finger, make the incision, and always have your knife pointed downwards towards the cutting board. And that would allow the skin to come off real easy. first fillet and usually if you have a bigger fish you'll have more meat and then you'll have a section here which is which holds the pin bones and we usually cut those away because you don't want to once you deep fry it you don't want to bite into bones so to have a perfectly deep bone fillet you'll cut this completely off and that's nice and pretty he's ready to batter up and fry All right, guys, so this is the fun part. This is the part that I actually show you how I like to prepare my crappy po' boy. But before we do so, I'll show you the ingredients that I like to use and the preparation techniques that I like to take before doing so. So the first step is, before dumping your crappy in the grease, you wanna make sure it's patted dry and free of water. Cause I know, you know you have to wash the fish. If you don't wash the fish, that's not a good look. Any type of meat I use, if I'm frying, I always dry it. Well, I wash it first, and then I make sure it's patted dry before I dump it into the grease. All right, so once it's completely dry, the next step would be is to put it into your batter. And I already have a pre-made mix that I like to use. And a lot of times I'll grab a bag of Louisiana fish fry with a hint of lemon in it. 
and then a combined mixture of just a little bit of flour. You know, I, some some people like to use the full bag of Louisiana fish fry without the flour, but the way I was raised, we like to mix both. So I have flour as well as the Louisiana Louisiana uh, fish fry mix, and I just all you do is simply just stir it up. Make sure it's completely even. And then once you do that, before dropping your fish in the batter, I have a special ingredient that I like to use, which is Everglades seasoning. And before applying, you know, just separate your fish on the plate. And, you know, crappy is actually a thinner fish. It's not like a catfish or you know, like a, a big bass that you catch in regular reservoirs or lakes. So you don't want to over season your crap. So what I like to do is, I like to apply just one layer on the top of my special seasoning, which is the Everglades. So you just do a light dusting on the top. That's pretty good. And then my second ingredient would be organic cayenne pepper. I like to use that, give it a little kick, because I love a little spice. So you do a little light dusting of that. Now once that's done, you'll put your fish into the batter. So I'll apply a couple pieces of fish into the batter and then you'll just mix it up as so. You can do it with your hand or you can do it with a fork, however you want to. So you gotta just take a spoon and just spoon it over, making sure my grease is hot. Now, everybody, you know, test their temperature out different. The way I like to do it is, or oh, the way I was taught, is you get a dash of flour or you can do water. Not too much water because, of course, if the grease is too hot, it will pop all over the place. So let me test it out. So grab some water. That's the grease for the oil. I'm going to put my onion ring. And this is the grease for my fish. So you hear that noise? It's good and ready. So the first thing I'll drop is my Nathan's butter onion. So ready for the grease? Look, these are the best onions you can do. It's like a sweet, bitter taste. Best thing ever. So you drop them into the grease. Get them good and ready. Place it to the side. Get my tongs moving around. With fish, you always want to drop whatever you're cooking first. Whether it's rice or onion rings, fries, tater tots. I always like to prepare that first. And then I'll uh, cook my fish because the fish typically cook a little sooner than the um, onion rings or the rice or whatever. So once you feel like everything is better, looks good to me, you'll apply it into the grease. Look how good that looks. My grease looks good and hot. So I'll apply all the pressure that I have into the batter now. Sometimes you have to squish it around if all the fish is not coated properly. So we look good on the top. All right, so I'm gonna batter the next round. I like to get dirty, y'all. Put your hands into the batter. Go ahead and get everything hot. That looks good to me. So just put it on into the grease. That's how I know everything is battered properly, too, by using your hands. Sometimes I use gloves. It just depends on the type of meat that I'm frying. Like if I'm using chicken, you allow to put one glove on it, like on my hands, and then that will be the glove that I'll grab the the chicken with. Okay, sometimes you might make a mess, but that's a part of cooking. Looking good to me. Now 
Now this last piece, we get him in the grease, and we're gonna be good to go. I like the fry food. Uh, this is my first time ever actually doing it on my channel. So I want to show you guys how I like to do it. Sometimes I'll have onion rings. Sometimes I like to use rice. Or, you know, I, I might have some asparagus. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. Today, I want my Nathan onion rings. And I want my crunchy fry with the pork water. That's it. So you want to make sure your temperature is not too hot because you can burn your fish and your onion. So usually I like to cook everything on medium. And then if I feel like I need to turn the temperature up, I will turn the temperature up. But everything looks good to go. Just wash it off my plate so I can wash it later. Where I battered my fish. And as you see, I have to the side, this is my drying rack. I like to use this instead of putting it on a plate. A lot of people like to put it a plate and then put a paper towel over it. I don't like to do that. Sometimes I do, it just depends on what I'm cooking. But when I'm cooking onion rings, fish, or chicken, I like to use a drying rack because it allows your grease to drop down so you still can have that hard, crunchy texture that you're looking for. And that's what we're looking for today. So you want to move your onion rings around a little bit. And just wait for them to get hard. I'm like a cleaner person when I cook. If I see a lot of stuff on the stove, I clean as I cook. If one dish is ready before the other, I'll go ahead and clean that pot or boiler, whichever one I'm using, while the other fish, chicken, or beef is cooking. All right, so we're gonna let that cook. And I'm gonna let y'all get the close-up shot. So we have the Nathan's onion rings cooking here on a medium tip. And we have our crunchy fillets cooking here. Ready to slap that bad boy on a whole boy. Ooh, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Y'all stay tuned. Alright, so my crack is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. So just like I said, these pieces aren't the biggest like slab crappy that you a particular have, but hey, it's still gonna be the same. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out so it won't be overcooked. And ooh, they look so good. I can feel the texture already. I'm gonna feel that crunch and that taste. Mm. I'm ready to munch on it now. All right, got that set to the side. I'm just waiting on my onion rings. Put that to the side. Let me check on that. Probably turn my temperature up so they can go ahead and get fully cooked. Because I don't like the salt and onion rings. They have to be good and crispy. Cook them for maybe a minute or two. And I'll go ahead and take them out. Sometimes it be fun. It just depends on, you know, what you like to do. Some people like to cook, some people don't like to cook. I actually like to cook, and I'm a southern girl, so a lot of things that I cook are fried. But I do like to bake things. Um, you know, a lot of times I like to cook fried fish, fried chicken, which I love. That's some special fried some chicken. Uh, I do like to do spaghetti, like pasta, different pasta. I'll cook salmon every now and then. So it just depends, you know, what I'm in the mood for. On everything, I prefer to cook. 
then go out, but I do like to adventure out to try different restaurants. Because it is nothing like having your own food. That's how I grew up. Alright, my onion rings look like they good and ready, so we're about to take them out. Place them on the drying rack. I like to separate them if I can. It just depends on how much room you have and how much food you are frying at that time. But we look like we're gonna have some good room to space everything out. They looking a little golden. Y'all see that? I'm about to tear this food up. That's how we say it down south. About to tear it up. Not enjoy. Tear it up. <laughs> Done with this part. Make sure I got everything out of the grease. All right, that's my last set of onion rings. And my next step is I'm gonna make that crappy fubu for you. And you'll see how I like to plate it and the things I like to put on it. Stay tuned. All right guys, so I finished frying my onion rings. I finished frying the crappy. Now I'm about to prepare my crappy po' boy. I already put the, what I'm started with is the hoagie uh, four count po' boy rolls. I used to purchase these from Publix. You can get the long one or you can get the four count. I like to do the four count one because sometimes I like to mix it up. Sometimes I put fish on it and sometimes I do have shrimp. So it, it just depends. I might do two sandwiches or one. Depends on how greedy I want to be. And then the second thing I'm going to put on my sandwich will be the shredded iceberg lettuce. And then I like to apply cheese to it. So I get this from the deli. It's Boar's Head Harbiti, Harbarti Jalapeno Cheese. And then the second ingredient will be French spicy brown mustard, which is yummy. And then it is sriracha sandwich sauce. I never tried this before, but hey, why not? I, I love sriracha when it comes to different um, like sandwiches that I make. I've seen the sandwich sauce, so why not try something new? If I'm making hamburgers or a fried fish sandwich, I love the sweet heat, pickles. It brings a lot of flavor to it. It's that sweet and then perfect spice to it. Give it a little more flavor. That's what you need. Please try these out by Mount Olive. And then I like to use blue plate mayo. Does about a good, that's what you try. So what I'm gonna do next is take my bread out of the stove. And then I'll take one piece of the bread the first thing I would do is apply my mayo. Give it a couple of squirts. So you want your, your bread moist. You don't want, who, who want a dry sandwich? Not me, or a dry cocoa. The sriracha sauce, as you see here. Give it a good couple of squirts. My spicy brown mustard. Forgive me for doing it, y'all. I forgot I'll record. <laughs> so we're gonna give that a couple squeezes. Ooh, maybe sound. That means it's gonna be good. All right, so what I like to do is just spread these sauces along the bread. So it'll be coated evenly. All right. 
Next step is I'll apply the shredded lettuce to the sandwich. It don't have to be pretty, you know, as long as it's on there. So we have the lettuce on, and my next ingredient I forgot to show you guys, I already have it pre-sliced, which is the tomato. So let me grab those real quick. So we'll put some tomatoes on there. And then after that, I'll apply the fish. Just a couple of pieces. Cause I can make a, a completely different sandwich after that. Once those are applied, let me rinse my hands off real quick. I'll put a little extra sauce on it. So I'll add the spicy brown mustard. Sriracha. Sandwich sauce. And the mayo. We look good to go. All right, let me grab a fork. So we'll add a couple of pickles on there. And that sandwich is gonna be yummy for my tummy. I can't wait. I'm telling y'all gotta try these sweet heat pickles. They off the chain. On hamburgers, fish sandwiches, you name it. And it's not too spicy, because I'm a spice person, but I don't like it too, too spicy. So it's like a mild heat. Put those on there, lay that to the side. I already have my Carbarti jalapeno cheese melted. Just apply the bread. And we're about to do a taste test. So let me put this to the side. Grab a couple of my onion rings that I fried earlier. And with my onion rings, I like to have a little ketchup. So let me grab that. Put that to the side. Rinse off my hands a little bit. And folks, that's the perfect sandwich. You can't tell me this don't look good. I'm about to tear it up. This is what you call slap your bomber crappy full boy sandwich by 3 p. Hey. Now I'm about to take a bite of it. Do a little taste test. Now a lot of times when you have sandwiches like this, things fall apart. That's how it's supposed to be. I'm about to let you know how it tastes. Mm-mm-mm. Had to grab a napkin, y'all. When I say that sandwich is fire, it's off the chain. Please try it. This is my technique on doing the crappy whole boy sandwich. A couple of crappies I caught previously. I want to show you guys how to do a clean and catch. Hope you guys like this video. Something short, simple. Something I want to do different for the channel. Hope you guys will comment and like it. And I will continue loading videos for you guys. Just like I said before, get out on the pond, perk your lips, and hey, enjoy your time. Peace. 3P action.